a point where you just have to let it go. Uh -huh. Because otherwise, I'd be so obsessed with that. I'm more interested in realizing that I can be creative until the day I die. No Amen. matter what I look like. And if I look like a, 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 a prune, I will wear a sequin <laughs> dress. you don't already know Lorraine on Instagram, you're one of few people who do, do not know Lorraine. She is the poster child for We're Not Dead Yet. So when I found out I was going to be near where she lives, I reached out to her and she was so gracious to grant me an interview in her studio where she makes the magic happen. And if you do know Lorraine, you know that she wears a lot of sequins and she's just a fabulous girly girl. So Lorraine, thank you for having us. No, thank you. As I said to you, it's always like a vacation when I get interviewed. It reminds <laughs> me of, you know, that the everyday toil. It makes me think of, oh, wow, it's not that bad. It's pretty fascinating, actually. Yeah. So I yeah. like talking about it. Well, tell me about your background, for starters. Ooh, um, well, being... Uh, older, as you know, gives you a lot of history yes. to talk about. I'm turning hopefully 59 in August, I don't take it for granted, so that means a lot of years of working for myself. I've always been self-employed and I started working full-time around 2021. Yes. And I proudly say that I haven't had a job, a <laughs> nine to five, ever. Okay. But I say that proudly because I'm not that kind of person. I'm not saying that it's not that nobody should have a job. Sure, sure. I shouldn't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> I have tried, and I wouldn't even last a week. It was like, even even when I liked the environment, when I liked the field it was in, mm -hmm. it just was not for me. Mm -hmm. So I made it work, and basically all my life, I'm, I'm a college dropout, um, which I'm also not especially proud of, but it's the truth. And the reason is that I had an eating disorder when I was very young, and that honestly impaired me. It really didn't allow me to concentrate and, you know, move forward the way I wanted to. So I took care of myself first mm -hmm. and made a career uh, with words. I'm bilingual in English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. So I've always translated, interpreted words. I've written them, edited them. And now, uh, since the advent of uh, social media, I continue to create content. Yes. The only thing that has changed is the medium in which I do it. Right, right. I have a journalism degree as I well. So we have that in common. <laughs> well, you have a degree. I don't. Well, I worked in journalism, but mm, everything I've done has always been learning on the job. Yes. Quite honestly. Yes. So how did this happen? Like doing doing Doing, yeah, do, being an influencer. Is that what you are? Or a content I like creator. Say, I like to say content creator mm -hmm. because I still consider myself like I'm creating some kind of, I don't know if it's to call it art. Storytelling. Storytelling, yes. yes. Um, so I, since I've always um, expressed myself through writing, when I was 30, I told myself I want to do something really important by this age, right? And I did, and it was write and publish a book. Wow. My first book. Since then, I have written and published 18 books. Oh my goodness. With traditional trade publishers. One of them is self-published, is the only one. And now I don't know whether I have a book in me because I do it all on social media. But the point of that is that that is how I blogged. I wrote about books. my eating disorder. I wrote about pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I wrote about finding love again. I wrote about what happened to me. I also wrote a couple novels, a book about writing. So that was my way of embarrassing my family <laughs> by talking. I was Bef pretty candid. Before you had uh, social media yeah. to do it as a <laughs> so tool. So to me in my brain, it's like social media was always there. Yeah. And when I was living in Spain and my book was published there, and I'm, I'm 
you know, to say, telling everything about my eating disorder, my depression, my, my struggle with this and getting national media coverage, my family is like, oh my goodness, this is terrible. <laughs> this, this, well, kid, not, not kid at 30, but, um, and now my, my dad, 28 years later, has to accept that his daughter is just like this. You know, and, and now he sees it real time. <laughs> but that's how it, honestly, that's how it started. And then when eventually I moved from Spain to the United States and started working as a journalist in, um, with the Palm Beach Post in oh, Spanish. Okay. They interviewed me, and then I was like, I want to work for them. And I said, I want to work for you. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, but you're an author. <laughs> Authors don't make good journalists. And I said, try. Watch try. me. And, and I did it. And I, you know, I did interviews and features for four years, uh, weekly. And I continued writing my books. I had my babies, and I had them late. Um, I, my marriage by then was not in good shape. It was not in good shape for a while, mm -hmm. but I gave it my all. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the crash happened in 2008, you know, and I, I just I walked away from the marriage after, you know, I tried uh, therapy and seminars and what have you, everything, because I don't want to have any regrets. And when I realized I couldn't really do that anymore, I left with my computer, the kids, which of course also saw their dad. I mean, they, they continue seeing their dad. Um, my, some jewelry that, um, that belonged to my family, which I later sold um, to pay the rent, and a mountain of debt. Uh, I was a single mom on food stamps for a while at 45, and I had no idea how I was gonna make money because mm -hmm. I had no skills even to be a bartender. Like I wanted to be, um, I mean, that's a great skill actually, yes. which I did not have, but I couldn't be, I couldn't work in retail. I couldn't work in, in I, even, I even applied uh, to work in a warehouse, like anything, mm -hmm. but I couldn't. They wanted to hire me. And what happened was that somebody saw on Facebook that I was a writer. I was going to dance classes to kind of get my head off of all the problems that mm -hmm. I was having. And this young entrepreneur says, oh, I see you're a writer and a journalist, and I need a writer. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is great. So the guy hires me to write these blog posts um, for a coupon site and paid very poorly. <laughs> uh, it was, I don't know, 15 bucks or something like that. But I was like, wow, but I'm making money writing. Yeah. And then he said, but they have to uh, be, oh goodness, they have to have SEO, like search engine And I was like, what the heck is that? <laughs> of course. I bet you know now. <laughs> I, know, I know more than that. But I thought, gee, well, I'll find out, you know? And mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. Then all the people that I had interviewed for the Palm Beach Post, I made a lot of connections with that. I, I like to meet people and keep in touch with them. So they gave me leads like, oh, this online thing is starting. They need an online writer. They need a bilingual whatever. And so I started applying here and there and the other. I mean, the, the, the short story is I ended up being the editor in chief as a contractor of a Latina mom magazine. I had done something with a website that belonged to the New York, New York Times, which no longer exists, about mm -hmm. .com. The application was so intense and I had to learn HTML and SEO and this and that and the other. And I told myself, if I don't make it, at least I will have learned for free. Yeah, exactly. And I did. I yeah. got the gig too. And so when I turned uh, 50, I just realized, you know, I don't want to be a Latina mom. I, not that I don't want to be that. It's just that I, I'm older and I want to do something for myself. But there are so many mom bloggers. I want to do something different. different. What can I do in the next 10 I said five to ten years, I'm already past the five years, <laughs> that I would love and be passionate about. And so I started a website called Viva 50 for women over 50 in English and Spanish, and I did all the social media um, associated with it. And I told my husband, I don't know if this is going to work. It could be years before we see any income. Uh -huh. We made it profitable. That's what I told Year my husband. One. Did you? Yes. I replaced my salary. Teach me, Obi-Wan. <laughs> I, had, I had a lot of PR content, yeah. uh, co uh, contacts. Mm -hmm. I, people knew how I worked. Mm -hmm. And they, if you're, prof oh, you know this, if you're a professional in one field, you're going to be a professional in whatever yeah. field you're in. You're just a professional. And so that served me very well to get my first sponsors. That's wonderful. And 
I did work around the clock at the beginning, yeah. not so anymore. It evolved from being more focused on the website to now Instagram is, is more is, social is, media. You know, yeah. And the thing is that because my brain, I don't know if it's because I'm bilingual, but I don't, I, the fact is that it's another language. So uh -huh. I speak that language and mm -hmm. I see social media and I get it. I know not all people do, right. and especially older people, but right. it's like I get it better than my kids. <laughs> I get it better <laughs> because I see the possibilities. Yes. And when I don't know something, I learn it. It's not going anywhere. It's not, definitely <laughs> not. For me, it's just like I look at it and I'm like, okay, that's, that's a new challenge. Let's learn it. I love that. So, I love that because I want to be a lifelong learner. Yeah. I'm really passionate about that. And I think that's what keeps us young yeah, is to continue yeah. to learn. For me, it's, and I have to say, I have one really bad flaw. And I don't have a lot of patience with people who are like, oh, you know, I am. Sometimes I hear people say, because I'm 45, I can't use my phone. I'm like, excuse me, I'm almost <laughs> 60, and I'm like making a living as a, you know, as a content creator. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm I do the editing. It's not like oh, I don't hire someone who does the mm -hmm. editing. Mm -hmm. I, I taught myself editing. So what is it like being? Insta famous. <laughs> I don't think I'm insta famous. Um, I it's funny because I I am considered. I think I have now thirty four thousand more or less followers on Instagram, but that is considered um, micro influencer. Right. Right. So, but here's the thing, that people who follow me on Instagram have no idea what else I'm doing. Right. So the way that we make like we make this is how we make a living. Mm -hmm. This is it. Like my husband also writes books. He's an author. He's now he's away teaching at university. He teaches writing, but and he's a professional photographer and all this. But basically, all the social media and everything we do is how we make a living. But that is a website, all the social handles associated with it, mm -hmm. Instagram, but also we create content for brands that nobody will see. Like I just did a few exercise videos for an app that belongs to a um, we call it a healthcare provider oh, or okay. a, an insurance company. Mm -hmm. What else have we done that's for other people? Well, just basically pictures. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just a picture, mm -hmm. you know, and that and that for them to use for, for them their to use or a blog for them to use right. for their website. So I just did some uh, travel, a whole set of travel videos for Carlsbad. But that's none of that is on my website mm -hmm. or anywhere. They mm -hmm. paid me to just be the person to represent an older couple with my husband to you that's know be a spokesperson. Though. What else have I done? Satellite media tours. That's pretty interesting too. That's where you, I could do it from home. A brand hires you, and you are the face of the brand for a series of interviews for the press. Fascinating. So that you also get paid on. Of course. Yes. Um, and then you learn your talking points and mm -hmm. you just hammer them out one after another. And right. for example, I was um, I did that for Campgrounds of Amer America for I think it was four years. I was their Spanish spokesperson. Mm -hmm. By the end of those four years, I knew the brand inside out. Yeah. So the good thing about those long partnerships that people don't really see a lot, or they mm -hmm. don't know all the ins and outs but of they, what's going on. They pay some bills. They pay a <laughs> lot of bills. They, they, I could not. I'm going to tell you this. I could not do any job right now I don't think where I would make the money I'm making now yeah. doing what I'm doing yeah and working the hours that I want the way I mean it's it's, it's not only like I was at to feel almost 60 at almost 60 and and you know the thing is that there's no limit to this yeah because when people think oh but I'm too old no you're not you know people the other people are getting older too silly yeah you know the, <laughs> yeah. The young people. There's are, a whole market yeah. of them getting older. So then old, the yeah. Gen Xers are getting older yes. and the Millennials are getting older, you know, and so, but there's something even more interesting is that just because I'm 59, almost, that doesn't mean that the people who follow me are all 59. No. In fact, I have a big chunk of younger people. So when a PR company asks for our metrics, they see all that. Yeah. So they're like, oh, so 30 some year olds are also yeah. following her. So now we're going to do this. Because why them. not? Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, it's not about who you are, but who follows you. And to a certain extent, what you represent. Right. You know, so. Well, so how, let's talk about you. <laughs> how <Yeah>. do you <laughs> stay so incredible? I know it's a lot of work 
you've talked about it openly that it just you know <laughs> you, you know I'm, you don't you, you don't wake up like this you know <laughs> I know that you you exercise I and I, you take care of your body I and do. the photos of you doing yoga are just phenomenal how do you stay motivated to well, keep keep it up I don't I, I I'm sorry I'm really sorry because I'm get asked that question a lot I don't have a problem with motivation <laughs> I'm not kidding it, it's more like um, it's a part of who I am and so exercise in any form it doesn't have to be yoga right. been, it's been running I've been a swimmer I was a dancer I'm, I'm, I've done I was a fitness instructor you know so many things I became a, a yoga instructor later on again and so it all ties into each other but it's a, it's who I am yeah and so I started exercising for my mental health mm -hmm. and um, as I said before I had a terrible eating disorder but I've also had major depressive disorder mm -hmm. three times at least one mm -hmm. of them took me to the hospital and anxiety and so one of the ways for me to keep my mental health up is exercise yes and so it's like somebody else drinking water or it's, it's very it's beneficial to the point that sometimes I have to dial it back I'm actually recovering from uh, oh. <laughs> two, two injuries on each one injury on each shoulder where two months ago I couldn't lift my I couldn't put my pants on without running. oh no and so I've had to dial back on the right. arm balancing and handstands and the chiropractor who's seeing me he's like if you do a handstand right now he's like you're gonna see a lot of me so I'm like I won't do it, I won't do it. <laughs> what are your top products either health or beauty products that help you thrive at this stage so I would say for the hair Olaplex Olaplex keeps it really really um, healthy is that a supplement it's, uh, it's, or no no it's something you apply to your hair uh -huh. it's um, very easy to find Olaplex it has all, all kinds of um, different things I like the one that bombs your hair it's called number six that's my go-to Olaplex number six okay if I'm on a desert island I want Olaplex, Olaplex number six, six. <laughs> that's all. okay for something that I take that I feel really helps me is magnesium. Uh -huh. I've taken it for years now and for different things. <laughs> to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does help that. <laughs> and also for um, to calm myself down. Mm. Um, my meds, I take mental health meds. And, me too. And oh my Can't goodness, live without them. Yay. Yes. I'm big on, on talking about that. Yes, me too, as well. Me too. Because what do you, take? you can <laughs> I take Lexapro <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and Buspiron oh, for I take, anxiety. I take Clonopin. They want yes. to take me off of it, but I don't want to. Uh -huh. So far, so good because I take a very minimal amount. Yes. I explain to people who are, you know, don't understand. Mm -hmm. If you had diabetes yeah. or heart disease, you would not say, oh, I will pray it away or right. oh I mean you can't you can pray you can, pray, pray prayer can probably does, help a little <laughs> depending on your faith prayer can't yeah. help yeah. but you know if you had heart disease you wouldn't say um, oh I'll just go talk to somebody about it it your brain um, yes you can get therapy for different episodes or different you know problems that you may have but if you have chemical mm -hmm. imbalance born with it you know and there's there's it's you gotta have medical treatment and it doesn't make me um, subdued clearly no, <laughs> you know, definitely not. Not. We're, like, we're both like, well, yeah. you know it doesn't make yeah. me subdued it just makes me for me it makes me function yeah you know, yeah it's happier like, uh, yeah it's like a level of um, like I started having issues at 17 and I tried everything like from lithium salts to I, 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 everything that ever existed and it was only when I was 41 already that a doctor here in the States hit well Lexapro had just come out and I got that yeah. combination I'm like whoa this yeah. is like it put me in this um, state where I could drive without feeling I was going to have a panic attack yeah. or without losing control. And as you know, I meditate, I mm -hmm. practice yoga, I do yes. breath work, I exercise, I eat moderately yes. well. And when things get tough, I pray <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> whether I believe it works or not. But honestly, it's, you know, some of us need that. Yeah, that. some people do need that. And I'm glad you said that because I'm yeah. very passionate about yeah. it as well. I am. 
a lot. Yeah. I think a good attitude also helps because, you know, we all have problems by this age. We've all lost friends, family. We've had, I know you have too, I, um, and I'm sorry. It's, we've all gone through horrible things, like mm -hmm. traumatic things that we mm -hmm. never thought we would, we would mm -hmm. overcome. And right before being on camera, I told you a little bit, and I've shared it online, that we're having some family difficulties now that are pretty extreme. And, but the thing is that if you can't laugh about it here and there, like if even my husband and I were, were at these dire times, and days that we think, when are we gonna get out of this? We have some parenting problems. And, and then we crack a joke that is really dark <laughs> and we both laugh because that's the only way to get through this stuff. Yeah, and, and then the th that's the other benefit too, right? With being in your 50s, y you have hindsight yeah. of what you've survived, yeah. right? Yeah. So you know you'll survive what yes. comes next. Yes, yes. Um, I don't know how it's long it'll take, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's right, We'll get through it. Like, you know, um, recently I was telling my husband, I am seeing that I could fall into another depression mm -hmm. because of all the problems that we're having. But because I was seeing it, I already know Okay, time for therapy, time for this, and time to reach out to someone, time to, you know, more yoga or, you know, whatever I need to do. And right. I did spend one whole day in bed that I was like, man, I hope this isn't, this is not Continue, a, another yeah. one. And, but, and then I got myself out of it. Yeah. And I'm like, I got this. Yes. You, you know? You do got this. <laughs> you do got this. <laughs> and then, you know, I have a little bit of not, I don't have a lot of patience either with people who are very much complainers because my goodness, when I tell stuff online, or I ex maybe I don't give all the details, but I explain, hey, we're going through a rough patch because I don't want people to think I'm pretty pictures and that's it. Sure, and, sure. And that I don't have difficulties. And the stories people tell me, I'm like, goodness gracious, and I'm complaining, mm. and mine's pretty bad. You know? And right. so it's not about what happens to you, as you all know, it's how you, you have to keep going forward. Mm -hmm. Like, what else? Yeah. You know, and... Cause we're not dead yet. We're not. <laughs> right. you know, that's, that's the thing when people are like, oh, but my wrinkles, but this, but that. And I do take care and I do do beauty treatments yes. and for certain parts There's of nothing my... nothing wrong with that. But, you know, there are certain things I do and things I won't do. Like I can't do, sur I'm not going to do surgery on my arms or my face looks better, but my arms don't. And, you know, <laughs> there comes a point where you just have to let it go. Uh -huh. Because otherwise I'd be so obsessed with that. I'm more interested in realizing that I can be creative until the day I die. No Amen. matter what I look like, and if I look like a a, a, a prune, I will wear a sequin <laughs> dress, and I'll be a prune. But you know, it's it's more the laughter and the having fun and the creating and and this gusto for life, you know, that can happen even in the darkest times. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. I think we're just gonna put a button on that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I just... God moments all around.